Hi guys, and in this video, we will be hosting a static website on S3. So first of all, you need to go to the AWS Management Console. And once we're in the console, you're going to search S3. So S3 is a scalable storage in the cloud. We're going to open the S3 console. Once we're in the Amazon S3 Management Console, we will be first creating a bucket. So go to Create Bucket and click that. Now you will see this configuration options. So the first is name and region. Let's give it a bucket name. Now do remember the bucket name has to be unique throughout the Amazon S3. So you cannot have a similar name of a bucket with another account or any user or anyone. So it has to be unique throughout AWS on the cloud. So let's, for example, just give it S3 bucket static website let's see if it's available yes it's available the next is the region you have to choose that so we're just going to keep it to us east north virginia and we don't need to have any copy settings from an existing bucket because we're creating a new one so now well, we're going to press next oh so it's saying it already exists so let me just write for example something um, in the end to a video let's try that yeah, so that's available. Once that is done, we have the versioning options and the tag options and the server access logging. So the versioning, we don't currently need it for this bucket. The server access logging, we also don't need it. Tags are optional. If you want to give your S3 bucket a tag, a key and a value, you can give that too. And then you also have the object level logging uh, that can record your object level API activity using CloudTrail for an additional cost, but we don't need that. So we're just going to press next. Once that is done, now we come to the set permissions part. So this is important. Right now we're blocking the access, the public access to our bucket, but we don't want to do that. So we do want public to access our bucket. So we're going to unselect this option and we're going to select these two options because we don't want the ACLs permissions because that's like a legacy option that we used to do. We're going to just use and put policies for our bucket. So we're going to keep these unticked and we're going to select only these two options. Once that is done, we're going to just acknowledge that yes, I know it will become public and press next. And the last part is just to review. So the bucket name, region, the options that you selected and the permissions. And we're going to press create bucket. And now you can see that this bucket has been created, so let's open it. Now to actually host a static website on this S3 bucket, we're going to go to properties. Once you're in properties, you can see over here the static website hosting option. So we're going to press that. And it's going to give us this option. So we want to use this bucket to host websites. So let's select that. And once we select that, it's give, it gives us a few options. The index document, which is actually the home or default page of the website, which is like the front end that you'll actually see once you open your website. And then you have an error document, which is returned when an error occurs. So if there's any error in your document, it will show you this error.html file. So let's give our document's name. Let's just keep it index.html. And for error, we're also going to keep it the same, so error.html. Once that is done, this is the redirection rules. This is optional, we don't need that. And these two, we also don't need to select that. So you can see the endpoint over here. This is our static website endpoint. Once we click that, currently you can see it's giving us a 404 not found error because we haven't actually selected the permissions. But once we save these configurations, press save so once we press saved now when we click to static website hosting and go to our endpoint you can see we're still getting the forbidden one but we're also getting an error because now we have actually have our static website however now what we have to do is actually add files into our s3 bucket so the files would be an index.html and an error.html or we can also add a folder or another file or as many files as you want. So currently I have two files made in a new repository that are made in my GitHub account. So the repository name is S3-static-website hosting, which is actually web hosting. 
and you can see there are two files over here index.html and air.html so these are the simple files I can show you guys what's inside so in the index.html it's just hello world and in error.html it simple just says error so nothing much and the, this repository is public so if you guys want to use it too you can simply just search up s3 static web, web hosting or just search myargul and then find this repository but after it putting the files in this repository i cloned this repository into my desktop and now i have these two files in my desktop so i'm going to go back to s3 and upload these two files to my s3 bucket so it's giving me this option i'm just going to press add files and select those two files so once that we've uploaded our files the next step is to add permissions to our bucket so that users can access it and access our website so we have to go to this bucket policy under permissions click that and over over here you can actually write your own policy but right now as we're using the sample or just a simple policy for users read access we're just going to go to AWS documentation over here. Let's just click that. It's going to open this AWS documentation blog from where we can have like sample bucket policies. So let's just click on bucket policy examples. And over here, you can see we have this granting read only permission to an anonymous user. We need this policy for right now. So this is just a sample policy. I'm going to copy it, go back to the console and paste it. Once I paste it over here, all I have to do is just simply write my bucket's name, which is this, in place of this, the bucket name over here. So once that is done, I'm just going to press save. And now it's saying that this bucket has public access. And even though it's giving us a warning, but we need it to be a website, that's why we're okay with this. And once we're done with that, we're going to go back to properties, go to static website hosting, and again, click on our endpoint, which is this one. And you will see that we will have our site open. So guys, now you can see this was the hello world text with an exclamation mark that we had in our index.html file. And now we're easily accessing it. And now if you want to have the error file, for example, so just simply, you know, like, Let's just give it a slash anything. And when you press enter, you can see it's giving us the error.html file. So it was that simple. Let's go back. I mean, like let's, let's just go back over here and this is actually our hello world. But this is just as an example, a sample website. So that's why in my index.html file, I only wrote hello world. However, whenever you have an application, you have, can have a lot of code and you can make a whole application of however you like it and give it public access to your s3 bucket and then currently your endpoint name is this the s3 bucket set static website video dot s3 website us east one amazon aws.com however if you want to give it a website name you can use the dns service which is the domain name service of aws called route 53 you can actually access it from your services route 53 you can just simply search it over here and use that however we're not currently doing that in this video but hope you guys like this video in which we created a bucket and actually hosted a static website on it